Hi there, I'm Alexander Griffin, owner and CEO of Dream Corridor Productions. Today's video is going to be focusing all about sound because today we have the Sennheiser MKE 600 video microphone. I'm going to go through the features of this thing and how it works. It may come as no surprise that cinema has been and continues to be a highly visual medium of entertainment. However, sound is still a very crucial part of cinema. My point is proven. Okay, so let's go a little bit more in depth about how sound works before we get into the details of how this microphone works. Essentially, sound travels in waves, propagating at a specific wavelength and at a specific frequency or time interval. Anytime you make music, make a noise, or just talk, sound travels through the air from that source in longitudinal waves, like the concentric circle example you see here. Normally through air, but it can be through a number of different media, sound waves cause the air molecules in which they are traveling to either compress or stretch out, and these compressions and rarefactions in the air are sent outwards to our eardrums. The amplitude of a sound wave is related to the extent which that sound is causing the air molecules in which that sound is traveling to compress or stretch out from each other. Visually, these can be expressed in the sound's waveform in the shape of a sine wave, for example, this tone at a specific frequency. Now keep in mind that music, noise, and talking all do not rely on one single pitch. Therefore, sound is a collection of sine waves together to create the audio makeup of that sound source. Sound is normally measured in what is called decibels. A decibel is essentially the measure of a sound's power related to the amplitude of the sound's sine waves. Sine waves have what are known as crests and troughs. If we were to put this on a graph, we can see that the distance between zero, or normal air pressure, and one of these crests, or the compressed air pressure due to the sound wave propagation, is the amplitude of that wave. This means the higher the amplitude of the wave, the louder the sound will be, and subsequently, the higher decibel number it will reach. Now, how does this relate to cinema? Well, sound is recorded through either an audio recorder directly or through a microphone connected to the audio recorder. When recording sound, the microphone is exposed to these sound waves. The audio is recorded digitally, allowing you to access the individual sound files and analyze the waveforms for editing in your films. Okay, so now to talk about this microphone, this falls into the category of unidirectional microphones, which essentially means that it best picks up the sound that is directly in front of it, as opposed to the sides or the rear, which really don't pick up the sound well at all. So this sort of microphone is incredibly helpful when you only want to record what is right in front of it, such as dialogue or sound effects. However, a notable exception to this is wind, which is why you need a windshield. This helps to block out some of the lower frequencies that come from wind. Now, while this does help to dampen some of the noises coming from the wind into the microphone, an even better solution is what's known as a blimp or a zeppelin. And that's essentially just a case around the microphone covered with a fur-like fabric, a little bit bigger than this, but it really does the job much better as well. Now, on a number of shotgun microphones, including this one, in addition to an on and off switch for if you want to use phantom or battery power with the microphone, they also include a frequency switch. Essentially, you see here a straight line and an obtuse angle. The straight line means that you switch the microphone to picking up all frequencies to which it is exposed, while the obtuse angle means you cut out the lower frequencies such as from wind or from any other lower frequency sounds from being recorded. Alright, so now let's apply this to more practical situations. Let's see what would have happened if this scene from Star Wars Renegade was not recorded properly. The first example will simulate the scenario of the microphone not being covered with a windshield or blimp, or the frequency switch not cutting out the lower frequencies causing the wind to overpower the dialogue. The second example will be what actually made it into the final cut of the film with improved sound recording etiquette. Peace? What could you create that could possibly bring peace? The only things that you could create would bring years of tyranny, of death, and destruction. I won't allow it. Okay, so in the cinema industry, you do need to take into account the standard for the maximum decibel reading 
for sound, and that is negative six decibels. So sound recorded through the microphone tends to distort once it passes negative six decibels, especially if you run it through an editing software, it sounds even worse. So to make sure that your levels aren't peaking, make sure you can control them on your audio recorder. So my thoughts on this microphone, the sound is crystal clear, it is well made, it is perfect, and it is durable, and you can use it for several different situations, such as cinema production, but also documentary production, video journalism, etc. All in all, a great microphone and a perfect addition to my cinematic arsenal. Well, that does it for today's Filmmaking Gear demo video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you would like to see more Filmmaking Gear demo videos, please leave a like and comment down below. Also, please subscribe and make sure you hit the gray bell icon so you get notified whenever Dream Corridor Productions posts a new video. Again, thank you very much for watching. I'm Alexander Griffin, and I will see you next time.